Hey there, I'm Saeed Shagavinder and together with a few of my fellow genius veterinarians, we are here to guide you through one of the many pathogenic diseases in cats. Yes, cats. These fluffy creatures seem to have captivated our minds with a heart melting and adorable nature. Or maybe not so much. Be it adorable or scary, these peculiar animals sadly suffer from pathogenic diseases such as ringworm. Yes, ringworm. What's that you may ask? Although the name suggests otherwise, ringworm isn't caused by a worm at all, but a fungus that can infect the skin, hair and nails. Not uncommon in cats, this highly contagious disease can lead to patchy circular areas of hair loss with central red rings. Also known as dermatophytosis, ringworm often spreads to other pets in the household and to humans too. Next up, a team of brilliant veterinarians will take you through the nitty gritty of this disease. Hello, my name is Caitlin Rossenrode. Dermatophytes are the causative agents of ringworm. The microsporum species, specifically the microsporum carnis, is the most common causative agent. The classification of ringworm is that it is a fungus. What are the characteristic features of this organism? Presented by Jonathan Fury, student number 17009830. This organism invades the hair and the skin of the animal. The invaded hair shows dermatophyte infection on the surface of the hair. The infected hair will flourish greenish yellow under an ultraviolet light. This organism forms macrocynidia used in asexual reproduction. The shape, size and cell wall features of this macrocynidia are important characteristics for identifying microsporum canis. The macrocynidia are typically spindle shaped. The size varies from 35 to 110 micrometers in length and 12 to 25 micrometers in width. And the amount of cells varies from 5 to 10 cells. The cell walls are thick, wart-like and often have a terminal knob. How do cats contract this disease? How does it spread? Cats can get ringworm directly through contact with an animal or indirectly through contact with bedding, dishes and other materials that have been contaminated with the skin cells or hairs of infected animals. It can be species specific or can spread to different species as well. Hi, my name is Jerome and my question was, can it survive outside and or inside the body? Yes, it can survive outside the body, as ringworm thrives in warm and moist conditions, so wet skin is more easily infected. It can be seen on the body and scalp, but eventually resolves itself. It can survive inside the body until it is treated, which is the most common portal of entry. Ringworm can enter the body via direct contact with infected animal or person's skin, opened wounds, so a broken skin from infected area is entering the wound. Bodily fluids, sharing clothing and materials that have been contaminated by the individual. Inhalation of particles of infected skin or fungus. And soil, which is very rare because it has to be infected and contaminated for a long period of time. The specific mechanism that facilitates the exit route for ringworm is that dermatophytes can produce anthrospores through the segmentation and fragmentation of the hyphae. The spores of the microsporum species are transmitted through direct and indirect contact with animals and fomites. These spores can withstand a variety of environments and can survive up to 15 months. Hello, I'm Ofani. Fungi are nucleated spore bearing non chlorophyll containing organisms which generally reproduce sexually and asexually. Their filamentous branches somatic structures are typically surrounded by rigid cell walls. Ringworm can be confirmed by performing a procedure called wood slam, where a UV light is shined over the infected areas. The infected hair would then fluoresce. A culture of fungus in the laboratory would have determined what fungus is causing the infection. For this, a sample of hay and skin scraping is taken to the lab. Steps that should be taken for the sample not to contaminate the environment and to not be contaminated are as follows. Collecting samples on lesions should be done last so that it does not contaminate the, other, the rest of the body. Inoculate the fungal culture plate upside down over a disinfected wipe so that the infective spores are trapped if they fall from the toothbrush or carpet spray. Packaging the sample securely. This means the, the sample should be packaged twice so that 
no spores can escape or no contaminants can enter the packet. How will you preserve and transport these samples? For optimal viability, purity and good isolate conditions, an isolate of microsporum cannon should be stored in potato dextrous agar at negative 20 degrees Celsius or in saline with a mineral oil layer at 25 degrees Celsius. A three layer packaging system consisting of a primary receptacle, a protective second layer and a rigid outer layer of packaging should be used when transporting these samples. Hi, it's Jakob Espo. So, what sets microsporum canas apart? If we start looking at classification, it belongs to the domain of Eukaryota, the Kingdom Fungi and Phylum Ascomycota. Further down, it belongs to the genus Microsporum grubby. Other fungi also belong to the domain of Eukaryota and the Kingdom Fungi, but then splits off into four phyla. Side 3, Diomycota, Zygomycota, Ascomycota and Basidiomycota. Bacteria belong to the domain bacteria and are further classified according to their shape. In other words, cocci, bacilli, spirilla, vibrios and spirochetes. Viruses are not classified as living organisms and are grouped according to shape and size, structure of the genome, chemical composition and the mode of replication. When looking at the morphology of microsporum canis, they form unique colonies. The colonies are flat, spreading, white or cream colored with a dense cottony surface which may show some radial groups. The reverse side of the colonies are usually a bright golden yellow to brownish yellow, but some non-pigmented strains may also occur. Bacteria occur in five basic shapes. Cocci, bacilli, spirillae, vibrios and spirochetes. Viruses also have a few basic structures. Helical structures, second to right, Complex structures, second to left, on the very left icosahedral structures and to the right a viral structure surrounded by a viral envelope. When looking at reproduction, Microsporum canis reproduces mainly through asexual binary fusion and by spreading out with gonadia. Other fungi reproduce sexually by forming sexual spores or asexually by budding, binary fusion, fragmentation or the formation of asexual spores. Bacteria also mainly reproduce by binary fusion but other less common methods also exist like budding and intracellular offspring production. Viruses have to infect a host and inject their viral genome into the host to force the host to produce more copies of this virus. When looking at genetic exchange, Microsporum canis does not regularly reproduce sexually, therefore genetic exchange is uncommon. But when it does occur, it occurs through the formation of ascospores. Most fungi are monoecious, but some bioecious species do exist. Exchange of the genetic material occurs during sporic meiosis in sexually reproducing fungi. Bacteria can exchange genetic material through processes known as conjugation and transformation. Genetic material can also be transferred via viruses in a process known as transduction. Viral genetic material does not regularly get exchanged or recombined unless two viral species happen to infect the same host cell in which recombination can then occur. What sets microsporum canis apart? The laboratory techniques used to identify microsporum canis are diagnostic polymerase chain reaction and culture identification. To identify other fungi, Sanger sequencing and next generation DNA sequencing. To identify bacteria, microscopy, culture techniques, biochemical reaction, serological identification, molecular biology and bacteriophage typing. Finally, to identify viruses, quantitative polymerase chain reaction, transmission electron microscopy, viral flow cytometry, and immunoblotting. So now you know all the workings and characteristics of the ringworm pathogen. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.